the fundamental theorem of linear programming states the following. For any given linear programming problem, exactly one of the following must hold. The problem is infeasible, the problem is unbounded, or the problem has an optimal solution. We're going to prove this theorem by showing that if the problem is not invisible and is not unbounded, then the problem has an optimal solution. First of all, we may assume that our problem looks like this. If we have a maximization problem, we can convert it to a minimization problem by taking the negative of the objective function and minimizing that. And for any linear constraint, we can write it in greater than or equal to constraint. For example, if we have a less than or equal to constraint, we can just multiply both sides by minus 1, and that will give us a greater than or equal to inequality. And if we have an equality constraint, we can write it as a pair of inequalities as follows. For example, a transpose x equals beta can be written as a transpose x at least beta and negative a transpose x greater than or equal to negative beta. So we're going to describe the proof alongside an example illustrating the argument. So first of all, this minimization problem is equivalent to this problem. So one of the constraints is going to be z equals the objective function. And so on this example here, this will be minimized z subject to z equals x plus y, x plus 2y greater than or equal to 2, and 3x plus 2y greater than or equal to 6. We're going to rewrite this system as follows. So we have here a system of greater than or equal to inequalities. And what we do now is we apply Fourier Moskin elimination to eliminate all the x variables from this system. And what we'll be left with are inequalities of the following form. So we might have lower bound inequalities on z, and these will be upper bound inequalities for z. The key is we will have a finite number of inequalities and the only variable that appears is z. Because we are assuming that this problem is not infeasible and is not unbounded, first of all, there must be a solution z to this system. And the other thing is, we must have an inequality of this form. So let's go through the process on this example. So the system that we are looking at will be this. And we will label these inequalities 1, 2, 3, and 4. So we're going to eliminate x, and the first thing we need to do is to make sure that the coefficients of x are minus 1, 1, or 0. And the only thing we need to do here is to multiply this inequality by 1 third. So that will give us x plus 2 third y greater than or equal to 2. And we'll label this 5. So we eliminate x, and the system that we'll end up with is the following. And we'll label these 6 and 7. Now we want to eliminate y. Again, we want to make the coefficients of y 1, minus 1, or 0. And to do that, we multiply 7 by 3. That gives us 3z minus y greater than or equal to 6. And we'll label this 8. And now we eliminate y. And we'll get 4z greater than or equal to 8. And we'll label this 9. And now 9 times a quarter will give us z greater than or equal to 2. And so the optimal value for this linear programming problem here is 2. Because we can set z equal to 2 and go back to this system and solve for a value for y that satisfy all the inequalities. Once we have y and z, we can solve for x that satisfy all these inequalities. So we'll get a solution with objective function value equal to 2. But this inequality also tells us that there's no solution with z less than 2. So this is the optimal value. And let's go back to the general argument. So we have an inequality of this form. But what we need to do now is we look at all inequalities of that form. And we're going to set gamma to the maximum value of these betas here. And that means we have an inequality that says z greater than or equal to gamma. So this inequality tells us that there's no solution to this system up here with z value less than gamma. So there's no feasible solution with objective function value less than gamma. But we can set z to gamma because 
Z will satisfy all these inequalities. And we can extend that to a solution to this system. So we'll get a feasible solution whose objective function value is Z, which is precisely gamma. Since gamma is a lower bound on the objective function value, gamma must be the optimal value. And we have also constructed a feasible solution whose objective function value is precisely gamma. And that proves our result because we have demonstrated that there is indeed an optimal solution 